I do have some exciting news, uh, my friends. I know that uh, many of you probably feel that uh, I spend a lot of time picking on our president. Well, actually, I'm going to pick on him a little bit more, and then I'll, I'll share some exciting news uh, with those of you who are very pro-Trump. Uh, because I did want to uh, mention, I was going to do this uh, a moment ago, and then we had that uh, that call, but I, I wanted to uh, wish uh, a happy Memorial Day uh, to our Japanese friends. Um, and I know that might sound odd. Why would you do that, Matt? But the president, over the weekend, uh, did wish... Uh, happy Memorial Day to uh, veterans of the uh, Japanese military. Um, now, to some of you, that uh, if you weren't aware of that, that might sound incredibly odd. Uh, why would Trump wish members of, I mean, we fought them, <laughs> the Japanese. Remember, you know, Pearl Harbor and everything, right? So why would Trump do that? Uh, that seems like a very odd thing to do. And... Uh, uh, I would tend to agree with you, but apparently now that's that's the thing. We kind of uh, here. I'll I'll play the audio for you just in case you don't believe me. And I know if you're a big MAGA person, you're just like, hey, what's the big deal, you know? And and I'm not really even trying to make a big deal uh, out of it, other than I just find it really bizarre. But uh, you know, I, I shared this out earlier on Facebook, and uh, you know, uh, Randy Kelly was all like, oh, you're acting like the sky's falling and this and that. It's like, no, I'm not. I just think, uh, you know, this is uh, what happens when you uh, make someone like Trump president. You you end up with a president wishing the Japanese military a happy Memorial Day. I, I mean, it is a little weird, you know, and John Hopwood made a comment that uh, uh, Trump probably... Uh, on the uh, on Facebook, uh, Hopwood made this comment that Trump probably doesn't know that we fought uh, the Japanese. Uh, to which I re- replied, uh, "I agree." But here, uh, let's uh, let's listen to this uh, firsthand. Well, thank you very much, and I want to start by saying Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. It's Thank you very much. Great day. Memorial Day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I have to wish you all a very happy Memorial Day, right? Memorial Day, very special back home. And I always like to be back in the U.S. as you do for that day. But we did a lot of great things for the last three days. Okay. This, that, that, now, to be fair, uh, that second part, it looks like he was speaking directly to American troops. But, but prior to that, uh, he was speaking to uh, the Japanese military. And that's why you heard a guy translating into Japanese, you know, oh, the president just wished you a happy Memorial Day. And uh, I wonder if there was any editorializing going on there with the uh, translation. Now, for you MAGA folks, because I know, I know you MAGA folks, you're, you're, you're sitting there, you're upset. You're going, oh, why do I listen to this guy? He picks on Trump, our exalted hero. I understand. But I have some very, very good news for you to share. Um, you've got nothing to fear in 2020, and here's why. According to my favorite website, and hopefully yours, rightwingwatch.org, uh, Robert Henderson, who is a right-wing pastor and uh, apparently is uh, a frequent contributor to the Jim Baker show, y'all, uh, y'all remember Jim Baker, uh, he has claimed that he has secured Trump's election in the courts of heaven. Very exciting. I meant to give that an air horn. <laughs> I'm rusty after the long weekend. There we go. Very exciting. Yes. Trump's victory is assured. He has already been assured victory. His victory has been secured in the uh, in, in, in the, the courts of heaven. I did not know, by the way. Now, this is very interesting to me. You know, because as I think most of us do, you know, we all kind of wonder about the afterlife. What will it be like? Will there be good Wi-Fi? You know, uh, all that kind of stuff. Do I get, like, free access to Hulu? You know, how does it work up there or down there, depending on where you go? So, of course, uh, you know, my MAGA friends know they're going to heaven, clearly, and uh, I'm pro-choice, so I, w- I will be in hell for eternity. I'm, I'm quite certain of that. But um, I did not know that heaven had any sort of court system, per se. But apparently it does. 
Uh, it says here, today's episode of The Jim Baker Show featured an interview with right-wing pastor Robert Henderson, who claimed to have interceded on behalf of Donald Trump in the courts of heaven. Can you believe it? Uh, during the Republican primary in 2016 and was directly responsible for Trump being elected president. <laughs> you have this guy to thank. This Robert Henderson guy. Uh, Henderson, who was on the show to promote his book, Prayers and Declarations that Open the Courts of Heaven, warned that those who dare to oppose Trump are actually fighting against God. Well, that's terrible. Now, uh, so... Uh, again, I wouldn't think that heaven would have a court system, but apparently it does. But then again, I suppose if you think about it, right, you know, you've got angels who get a little rogue. I mean, that's how we ended up in hell, right? With, uh, you know, Lucifer, he was an angel, I guess. I, it's been a long time since I've been to church, my friends. I'm trying to remember all this. I did go to a Catholic school from grade two to grade eight. So a little bit's coming back to me here and there, but... I'm not exactly what you'd consider a master theologian. Anyway, let's listen to uh, some of this audio. Very exciting. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to this in the Facebook live chat also for those of you uh, who are listening on the Facebook. Because, again, if you're, if you're concerned about uh, 2020, fear not. Uh, apparently, this man has already assured that there will be another victory for Trump. So uh, let's give this a listen. That's four stages of judgment that will come upon anybody that becomes a party to saying we're casting off his bonds and removing his constraints. And, of course, oh. that's what they're doing with, with President Trump. Yeah. They're actually saying we don't want him. And that's what's so deadly about that is that he's God's choice. He's God's choice. And God said, I set him. Yeah. They can try all day long to remove him. They will. Well, we have to stop for a moment now. Uh, something I, I'm, I'm concerned about with, with all this. I understand that Trump is God's choice and so forth. And, and, and he is a, uh, Trump uh, clearly is a, a very godly man. I mean, you know, I don't know if, uh, you know, being with the porn star while his uh, wife is home with their newborn baby, if that's really the most godly thing, but, but whatever. Uh, hey, I mean, a lot of these, uh, I mean, Jim Baker himself, the guy whose, uh, show, uh, this guy is on. I mean, you know, he had his own dalliances with porn stars and whoever else. And he's clearly a very godly man. He's Jim Baker. So, uh, we won't worry too much about that. But I, uh, whenever I hear about how Trump is God's choice and how much God loves Trump and, and Trump is God's favorite, you know who I feel really badly for is, is, uh, Ronald Reagan, Ronald Wilson Reagan. Because it, uh, prior to Trump, it was my understanding that Reagan was was God's choice. Like, I always imagine, you know, going to heaven. And again, I know that won't happen because I'm pro-choice. Uh, and, uh, and I'm pro-gay marriage, and etc. But uh, I, I always imagine, uh, you know, going to heaven and uh, getting to, to go into God's office for the first time. You know, I, I imagine there's some sort of uh, uh, discussion uh, you know, at some point, you know, that's why they use that phrase, meet your maker. You got to sit down with the big guy, maybe go over some things, uh, what his expectations are for you now that you're in heaven, uh, how to stay out of heaven's court system, how to avoid trouble. But I just, I've, I'd always kind of imagine like you walk in there and like, uh, behind his giant desk, there's maybe, uh, a big American flag because everyone knows our country is God's favorite. Um, Israel, a very, very close second, of course. And then, uh, maybe next to that is a, a giant portrait of, uh, Ronald Wilson Reagan, you know, uh, clearly God's favorite president. But I'm worried, uh, that, uh, Reagan has been displaced. And I just wonder, uh, how he must feel, you know? I, I mean, I'm an empathetic person and, if there's a spirit of Reagan uh, floating around up there in heaven, I just, uh, you know, I mean, he must feel as though he's been sort of not cast out. Certainly, he would never be cast out, but sort of pushed aside a little bit. Um, or at least he will be once Trump eventually uh, ascends. Uh, all right, let's listen to more of this. Will not remove him. God said, I set 
him as the president. And they can fight and they can, they can curse and they can do all that they want. The problem is they're fighting against God. Right. They're fighting against God. Yeah, right. That's and thing. God says, look, I'm, okay, when, the, what, in March 2016, in March 2016, I was in Germany. And it was in the heat of the Republican primary. And there was like 10 or 12 people still in it. And all of a sudden, I have a dream. I'm in Germany, and Donald Trump calls me on the phone. And he says, I need for you to do a conference for me on July the 6th to shift things concerning my campaign, to shift things so that I will win. And so now, just to be clear, oh, hello to uh, Wayne Noel, who joins us in the Facebook live chat. Now, just to be clear. He's not saying that Trump called him while he was in Germany to help with his campaign. He had a dream that Trump was calling him while he was in Germany for help with his campaign. And I say close enough, right? I mean, that still still counts for something. And a very specific dream, you know, even even with a a specific date. I don't know about you all, but when I dream, like, my dreams usually aren't that specific. But he had a very specific dream. Oh, I did that. I had a conference You're on kidding. July the 6th, and we stood in the courts of heaven, in the council of the Lord, and in that council, God told me to make a decree out of James one eleven, wow. which is all flesh. So far, sounds legit. Flesh is as grass, and the flower is as the glory of the grass. And he said to me, he said, here's what I want you to do as you stand here. I want you to decree that Hillary Clinton's campaign is as grass. And that she is as the flower of the grass. And- oh, my. I don't know what all this talk about grass has me uh, concerned. Uh, I assume these folks oppose uh, legalizing cannabis. Uh, hello. Uh, who's, who's, oh, my goodness. Hi, you're on the air. Who's this? Did he ever dream that he was dreaming that he was in Germany? Or did he was he actually in Germany? That's a great question, uh, John Hopwood. I believe what he's saying is he was in Germany, but he was having the dream while he was in Germany. But I think he was dreaming that he was in heaven. What is that music? I'm at a graduation. Why? Whoa, who's uh, who's graduating on a Tuesday? It's uh, for uh, sir, what would you call him? Something to do with services. Okay. Let's just say, end it at that. Hey, uh, I, I can't. I have to hang up now because everybody's staring. But uh, All right. Well, thank you for the great just call. Just remember, when you're talking about Trump and Ronald Reagan Jesus, and God, buddy. that Lucifer was uh, God's favorite. Oh, all right. Oh, and he uh, hung up. All right. Well, that's uh, the very good point. But uh, Lucifer ultimately ended up being a bit of a disappointment, I think. And well, all right. I got to back this up a little bit, by the way, because I I, I don't quite uh, follow what this gentleman in this clip is saying about. So he had the dream and then there's something about grass and Hillary Clinton and like, uh, uh, God told him Hillary's ass is grass or something, and he took that to mean that he was supposed to do something in heaven's quarter. I'm very confused by all of this. I don't know if any of you are. I'm going to back this up a little bit. Maybe I'm just a little slow. I don't know. Let's see. That was rhetorical. Of the Republican primary, and there was like 10 or 12 people still in it. Okay. And all of a sudden, I have a dream. I'm in Germany, and Donald Trump calls me on the phone. Mm-hmm. And he says, I need for you to do a conference for me on July the 6th to shift things concerning my campaign, to shift things so that I will win. And so I did that. I had a conference on July the 6th. And we stood in the courts of heaven, in the council of the Lord. And in that council, God told me to make a decree out of James 1.11, which is all flesh is as grass. And the flower is as the glory of the grass. And he said to me, he said, here's... I just want to interject and say, uh, none of this uh, sounds the slightest bit insane to me. Uh, And I'm not being sarcastic at all. This all sounds completely reasonable. What I want you to do is you stand here. I want you to decree that Hillary Clinton's campaign is as grass. 
and that she is as the flower of the grass. And the burning, searing, exposing heat of God will come and bring exposure, and she will wither away, and Donald Trump will be the president of the United States. And we did that, and that's exactly what happened. Wow. Well, that's not exactly what happened. I think she lost the election. I don't remember there being a burning and a withering away. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's uh, very, uh, very descriptive. Oh, that's the end of the clip. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he was, uh, maybe he meant, uh, hyperbolically. Uh, but, uh, interesting. So he's basically taking credit. Again, uh, just so you know, cause you MAGA people, you owe this guy. You owe him. He, he made sure. He went to the court of heaven and made sure Robert Henderson is his name. So he, he should be your hero. Well, after Donald John Trump, of course.